In the open and arid environments of ancient Argentina, a giant bird roamed the lands, making its name known as the ostrich from H-E double hockey sticks. Meet Kellenkin. Unlike most animals I cover, Kellenkin's history of discovery is pretty short and sweet. It was discovered by a high school student, surprisingly, Guillermo Aguirre Zabala, who now studies prehistoric animals and rocks in similar time periods as Kellenkin, discovered this terror bird in 1999. This happened while he was near the village of Camalo in the region of Patagonia. After the removal, the fossils went up on display in a museum in the city of Bariloque. It wasn't until way later in 2007 when the bones were actually truly studied and attributed to a new animal. And as if discovering a new giant bird wasn't cool enough for a high schooler, it was also named after him. At least the species name was. Kellenkin Guillermoy with the genus named Kellenkin taking after an evil winged deity in Tuelchi mythology, which originated in eastern Patagonia. Now this specimen is the only fossil material we have to date from Kellenkin. However, the skull is remarkably preserved, being one of the most complete skulls of any forest racket, which is a group of predatory avians popularly known as terror birds. The skull was also the largest, measuring 2.3 feet long, around the size of the skull of a horse. Along with this, a lower leg bone and a toe bone were also discovered. This small amount of fossils actually cleared a lot of things up regarding our understanding of terror bird anatomy, since not many of these bones have been found in other similar birds. Given that Kellenkin had the largest known skull of any terror bird, it's thought that it may contend for the largest in overall size as well. Estimates put it at roughly 9.8 feet tall. However, nothing can be said for certain, since the remains of everything other than the head are so sparse. It most likely wasn't the heaviest, as suggested by the shape of its lower leg bone, placing it within the more sleek and slender terror birds better adapted for running after prey. Another group of terror birds, known as Brontornithinae, includes much more thick and robust birds, like Brontornis. This group of terror bird most likely took first place in terms of weight. Now by no means was Kellenkin lightweight. Estimates range anywhere from 200 to 250 pounds. Because of this, coupled with terror birds having unusually small wings, they weren't built for flying at all. Instead, their wings and feathers were likely used for balance and stability while running, and for added cushioning in the case of a fall or pounce. Kellican had a Swiss army knife's worth of killing adaptations. More than half the total length of the skull, its beak was tall, narrow, and hooked which means it would have been perfect for dealing lethal strikes, aiming for important organs, causing ruptures, and stunning prey. Its beak was also well designed for picking up small animals and thrashing them around, perhaps even throwing them on the ground to break their bones before eating them. Its eyes were likely very sensitive and keen, like many raptors today. Visually oriented hunting would have been necessary for terror birds, as many predatory birds have a not so strong sense of smell. The large eyebrow-like ridges above the eyes, similar to modern hawks, would have protected their eyes against the sun, which indicates they hunted by sight in open, sunlit areas, and not shaded forests. This leans scientists more towards the idea that Kellenkin was active in pursuing prey, only relying on scavenging when absolutely necessary. The more gracile build of Kellenkin also suggests a much higher speed compared to other terror birds. Estimates for even living birds aren't set in stone, so guesses for the speed of terror birds are even less so. With that in mind, Kellenkin is clocked at an estimated 30 to 45 miles per hour, about the speed of an ostrich. The legs weren't just used for running, either. Similar to many large birds, like cassowaries and secretary birds, Kellenkin likely used its leg muscles to power devastating kicks. Combined with the large curved talons known in many terror birds, their legs would have been enough to break the bones of medium-sized prey around the size of a gazelle. Their claws and beaks would have also been useful against armored animals like armadillos and glyptodonts. Studies of the similar terror bird, Endogornis, show that it may have had very rigid and stiff skulls, a feature associated with swallowing prey whole or through targeted strikes with a beak to break apart the meat of larger prey. On the talk of Kellenkin's hunting arsenal, it's also been often compared to Tyrannosaurus rex in that it had a very large head, proportionally small arms, and long legs. These are key aspects of a very strong-headed hunter. One of the only areas where terror birds like Kellenkin fall short in predator features is the bite force of the skull. Only estimated at around 130 newtons, 
it wouldn't be very effective at biting to cause injury. Terrorbird necks, however, were especially designed for use as striking devices to stun and injure large prey through quick and precise hits. Kellington lived in areas without much plant covering. This gave it plenty of space to run around in pursuit of food. Similar to places like the more flat and open areas of the African savanna, Kellington lived in mostly warm and dry bushlands. Along with these open areas, spare forests and mountains were also present. The animals Kellington was surrounded with offered a wide range of food. Rodents, ground sloths, armadillos, glyptodonts, and some larger prey like the camel-like Thessodon and the pig-like Ashapotherium. Kellington lived with a few other carnivores as well, but nothing nearly large enough to compete with them for food. Among these is Cladocyctus, which is around the size of a fox. Kellington's popularity as the Devil's Treaty Bird has led it to be featured in a variety of media, including the documentary Prehistoric Predators and various games in the Jurassic Park franchise. And that concludes August's Prehistoric Animal. Make sure to put your creature requests in the comments, check out the merch down below for some dino gear, and join the Discord to chill with fellow dino lovers. And as always, keep your pencil sharp.